My name is Sibu Siso, and my family and I live in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. Our village is next to a game reserve and my father works as a game ranger. Since I could walk, my father has taken me into the bush. He taught me how to love being in the wild. He knows the name of every creature and the use of every plant. I will never forget the day I saw my father's favorite animal for the first time. It was hidden in the bush and almost impossible to see. But then it moved. A leopard. Gone so quickly. But something I would never forget. It was the most beautiful creature I'd ever seen. The most amazing thing about a leopard is its beautiful coat, which helps it blend into its surroundings. Leopards are also so hard to see because there aren't many of them left. My father says that they have disappeared from many of the places they used to be found when he was a boy. And if we don't stop protecting them, there might not be any left by the time I have sons. We were both so excited on the way home. We could hardly wait to tell everyone about what we had seen, especially my older brother, Ngosi. Ngosi, Ngosi, I want to see Hey, Ngosi, as I intend. Who knows what I'm going to say? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. Even though he seemed happy for us, I could tell that there was something that was making my brother upset, and I could guess what it was. My brother is a member of the Shembe Church. Every year, the men in the church wear leopard skins to take part in a dance called the Umgiti. My brother was now old enough to join the Umgiti, which was an important part of his religion but he couldn't do it without a leopard skin. That afternoon, Gorsi was at work when two of his friends from church came to visit him. They had something to show him. They had found out where to buy leopard skins. His friends wanted to know if my brother wanted to buy one. Mugosi explained that he couldn't, that it was his father's job to protect leopards. His friends left him with a gift, which they hoped would change his mind. At the end of the day, my brother went home to try on his new leopard skin headband. I could tell trouble was coming. My father was furious. He felt Ngosi was insulting everything that was important to him. My father was also angry because it was illegal to own or buy a leopard skin without getting a permit from the government and course he could end up in jail for a very long time. My brother was hurt that his father could not respect his son's religion or culture.
The next day, I went with my brother to town. His friends had told him where to find the skin, and he had decided to go look for himself, no matter what our father thought about it. We found the leopard skin, even though it cost him two months' wages at the shop. I knew my brother had made up his mind to buy it. But just then, something caught my eye. I thought it was another, more beautiful leopard skin. But it wasn't. It was fake fur. It felt real, it looked real, and it cost nothing. It was for free. All Corsi had to do was to fill in a survey. All of a sudden, my brother could take part in the Umgiti and do it in a way that would make our father proud. We returned home to show my father the new fur. At first, he was even angrier than before. But then, I showed him the label. And he began to understand. Two weeks later, my brother took part in the Umgiti for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> 